look, I'm a self-taught developer. I was inexperienced at one time too. It's okay. But these computer science grads, they really hate us. Just look at this comment. Travis Media, I really hope that the use of the word engineer will get properly regulated like it is in many countries in relation to the traditional engineering, because you know, building bridges and skyscrapers, web development, it's all the same thing. All those self-educated are giving software engineering a bad reputation and it's high time the industry is getting regulated and cleansed of the imposters. You, me, cleansed of the imposters. That's a big word. So these computer science graduates, they're really hating on us. They hate us being in the industry for reasons I don't wanna get into. And we need to at least be sure that we're growing into the programming roles we aspire to, being good, reliable teammates and producing good work. So I was thinking about this today, about what makes us stand out as inexperienced or non-traditional, maybe that's a better word, non-traditional developers. And I came up with five. Five things, five signs of an inexperienced, non-traditional developer and how you can stop exhibiting these yourself. Let's get started. Number one is you're thinking only in terms of making it work. It's only about making what you're coding work. Get it working and move on. And that's actually okay at first. Obviously, if you can't get your code to work, then you really haven't made any progress with your task. But over time, you have to learn to move past that. And in actuality, it all starts before you even write code. When you're assigned a task, instead of just firing up your text editor and coding and making it happen, you need to make a number of observations first. Get a notebook, lay out what you're building, what it is you're building, what your requirements are, which often leads you to gathering more information that you didn't know, that's important, and ultimately having a clear understanding of what it is exactly you're doing. And once you have this mental process of what you're doing, Think about how it fits in the current code base, like what constants or existing code you can tie your code into to keep from reinventing things. And then consider the readability of your code, the maintainability of your code, and the scalability of your code. It's more than just making it work. The second sign of an inexperienced, non-traditional dev is that they make huge changes to the code base at once, meaning your pull requests are too big to make sense of. They're too big for any meaningful comments or remediation. In not checking your code in often, you can introduce problems that are harder to diagnose because of all the changes to the code base that you've introduced. A pull request should really just have one cohesive feature that you're working on, not multiple. And if that feature is big, then perhaps it should be broken up into multiple logical parts. So commit often and make sure to test each commit. If you've sketched or planned out your feature first, like I just mentioned, you probably have ended up with a checklist of steps to get your feature working. And every time you check off a step or a task, test it and commit it. And once the feature as a whole is fully working and tested, then push your code up and create the PR. Here's a good example that I came across. I commit every time I finish a unit of work, but don't push my code to the server until the feature is fully complete. I'll try to elaborate with an example. Say my job is to develop a login system for some website. I would write my class for a user, then commit. Then I'd create the HTML form to accept the username and password, and then commit. Then I would add the appropriate validation, making sure the password's long enough, making sure the email's valid, things like that, and then commit. That's three commits. This could be three commits in one day or spread over multiple days. It depends on how long each unit of work takes. Once everything is done, I would then merge my development branches into master and push to origin. You actually don't wanna do that. You wanna push up your branch and create a pull request to be reviewed and then merged into master by somebody who approves that. I would never ever ever push code that would cause a crash or break the build for a project obviously, especially if you're collaborating with others. So if you're in the middle of writing a class but haven't finished typing out a function, don't commit until everything is done and you can successfully build. So if you planned out your work and have some sort of checklist, you would commit at each check mark. The main thing here is don't write a bunch of code and then push it all up at one time. That's a no-no. Number three is that you're always learning new programming languages or frameworks. I think all of us have fallen victim to this. Whether it's the hype of a certain technology or you just decide one day that you wanna master something completely new just for the challenge of it, it's really a vain pursuit. Why? Well, I'm all for you being a constant learner. That's a good thing. You ha actually have to do that in this industry. You have to always be learning. But the question is, what are you learning? It's much more beneficial to be learning and mastering the concepts of programming and how things are really working than learning many different languages, which to be honest, 
Each one's just a new syntax. It's just a new language. Why do that? If you really understand the concepts that underlie programming, a loop can be looked up in any language. A switch statement can be looked up in any language. It's all just syntax. So if you're asked to build a feature in a new language or framework, something that you haven't used before, you should be able to one, read a quick overview of that technology and how it works, and two, be able to build that feature based on programming concepts or pseudocode even, and then transforming it into whatever syntax that language speaks. Also, and I did a video on this recently, I'll put a link above, but if you're gonna learn a new language for the sake of doing so, pick a lower level language like C or Rust, or even Go or C Sharp if you're coming from Python or something high level like that. And once you've put in the work of learning the deeper concepts that those languages force you to understand, you can really jump in anywhere. Number four, you're working on too many different things at once. As a new developer, you want to look competent and you want people to think you're very efficient, that you just happen to be this coding prodigy that came out of nowhere. But take a look at senior to mid-level devs. They reject the extra work because they're in the middle of something. They're in the middle of one thing. They have a really good grasp on that one thing and the requirements for that one thing. And they get it done well. You, on the other hand, have three things going on of which you still don't fully understand and your brain is having to jump back and forth between them. As a new dev, don't be embarrassed to say, I'm currently in the middle of something, let me get this done first and then I'll jump on that. Stop volunteering for everything. Get your one assignment, understand the requirements well, and then knock it out the park. Be a dev that always delivers over one who is always in the middle of 10 different things and always has to give updates and excuses for all the things you're doing. Take one task assignment at a time and complete it and commit to a new task only when the previous task is delivered as requested. In fact, building software is a slower process than you think, especially if you want to do it right. And then number five is you don't really want others seeing or critiquing your code. If you did, they'd probably be suggesting that you do things differently or speak on how inefficient or unreadable it is. And you don't want to touch it again because you got it working and you wrestle with it so long, you're sick of it. And we just don't like the criticism as new developers. Strangely, we want them to praise our super complex and unmaintainable code. But thankfully there are code reviews and there's gates set up so that senior devs will have to approve or reject your pull requests. This is a learning process. The point here is to accept that you're a junior dev and write junior level code. And the only way to really get better at it is to have people critique your code and learning what's wrong with it and making adjustments in how you code along the way. So write your code, take the criticism and advice of others and let it fuel you into becoming a better programmer. So these are five signs of an inexperienced, non-traditional developer. Now you know, make the adjustments and you'll see growth in your career. What do you think? Leave me a comment below. Let's get the discussion going. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.